11 signs that you could be an empath and what to do about it, <laughs> right? Because if you are an empath and you resonate with these 11 things, sometimes they can be a hindrance. They can also be a beautiful thing. So stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm also gonna share tips on how you can become a super empath. And yes, it is that of a superhero. So number one side that you could be an empath is that you feel empathy. That might seem really obvious, but to a narcissist, they're gonna tell you that doesn't exist. Empathy isn't real. An empath isn't real. It's a unicorn frolicking in the, the woods. <laughs> no, it is real. A narcissist will also tell you narcissists don't exist. So don't listen to the narcissist. We know that they lie. We know that they gaslight. And it's amazing how many people still listen to them. I mean, they run politics. They run Hollywood. Yes, they're the top 1% but that's who's running the show in the world. So it's no accident why a lot of politicians, a lot of uh, Hollywood are narcissists, okay? So don't listen to the narky dark. I promise you they're gonna lead you astray. They only give a sliver of truth so they can keep the con going. And that's how they perpetuate it. So again, number one, you have empathy. You care about other people. You can feel their emotions. Number two, you go farther than that because you can feel their emotions even when they're lying. So a lot of times, see, you gaslight yourself as an empath because you'll be around a narcissist or a toxic person, same, same, somebody who's very negative, and maybe they're acting like they're a really good person. So you sense it. So you can feel not only the emotions of other people, but you could also feel their intention. The danger is a lot of times you gaslight yourself and you're like, that's just my instinct. I must, you know, be in my head because number three, a lot of people might say you think too much. You overthink. You're in your head. You're number four, too sensitive. You're very sensitive. The reason you're sensitive is because you're picking up on the whole world. How did this happen? Out of childhood, all kids are really born as narcissists and we learn empathy. We learn to care about other people, but the spoiled kid who's just me, 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 I want this and I want it now. Like Veruca Salt in, you know, Willy Wonka, they're always gonna just be about them. And if their parents never tell them any different, or if they have parents exactly like that, they're gonna be that adult who behaves that way. I want that parking spot and I want it now. They're going to get in a fight with you if you take a parking spot, anything, right? Because they haven't learned empathy. Like, oh, other people also need to park in the world or anything like that. That's like a really minuscule example, but you get my drift. You notice the whole world. Why does this happen? Because as a kid, instead of becoming the narcissist, you became the empath attuning to everybody's feelings. You've probably heard that before, right? But you do this to keep safe. You make sure what's their mood? What's their mood? What do they want? What do they want? And so you can become a people pleaser, right? That's number four. You can become a people pleaser, which pleases nobody, especially yourself. Because what happens is number five, a lot of people can really dislike you because they think that you're a pushover. They take your empathy and your kindness for a weakness. And it can be, I'm sorry, it really can be a weakness because a lot of times you edit yourself out of the picture, right? You're like, oh, I don't matter. You can become like a martyr and that's not healthy. You do matter. Your feelings do matter. What you desire does matter. That doesn't mean you have to be careless and not care about anybody else like the narcissist does. But see, sometimes the empath goes overboard because you're so attuned to everybody else to try to keep safe that you're more concerned about that. And so that's why sometimes people dislike you and even hate you because they think you're pushover, easily manipulated, gullible, but you're not. But see, number six, you don't trust your instincts, although you have tremendous instincts. Now, remember, we're talking about an empath here. At the end, I'm going to tell you how you can be a super empath and we can transform some of this stuff without 
throwing baby out with the bathwater, right? Because you want to keep the good traits because there's a lot of good traits about being an empath. Not only do you notice everybody and everything, but you are highly intuitive. So you can feel people's intentions very easily. You can even see down the line. Some people might say, oh, you're seeing into the future. Or you're some kind of fortune teller. No, you're not that. It's just that you're very emotionally intelligent. Everyone has this ability, but people who are very self-centered, they don't, they don't take the time to do it. So they don't even notice. They don't notice other people. But see, you're noticing all this. So you might feel like you can predict the future just because you can see the pattern of things. But then you, like I said before, can sometimes gaslight yourself because you're like, why am I, why am I thinking that? Why am I doing that? When you're around negative people, it's really exhausting. It can be really draining because they're feeding off of your good energy. So what does that mean exactly? Sometimes you can even be in a big crowd um, at the grocery store or at a concert or something, and you're physically exhausted. So what are we on number eight? Are we on eight? Is this eight? Um, you sometimes can feel so exhausted that you want to isolate, but you're actually very social, but you're like this social introvert, extroverted introvert, right? That's why a lot of artists are empaths because they can feel and connect to other people and yet they want to like run away. It's like, I, I'm an acting teacher, if you don't know, and a lot of actors of them say they're actually very introverted and it might surprise people who don't understand the arts and empathic people, but it's because we give, 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 right? You give, 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 but then you give to the point of just being empty and you want to isolate to retreat, to reset your nervous system. And that's very normal. That's actually very good. Take time to reset. But sometimes you feel like you're kind of even scared to go out in the world just because you know it can be very draining. Number nine, people open up to you so easily. Like, I mean, you could be on a bus or something and by the end of the bus ride the person next to you has told you their entire life story because people feel that empathy and it's so refreshing you could have not said anything but they're going to open up and share so much with you because they feel like you're safe to do that number 10 unfortunately you are going to attract a lot of narcissists because they want that good energy they want to mirror off of you they they see it and they also want to play into the fact that they feel like you are easily manipulated that you will be a people pleaser and so they are going to constantly make you feel like you got to do more you got to do better and then you're going to try to do more and do better because you care about people and then they're going to say that's not good enough and you need to do more and so that can create a really negative bond which is called a trauma bond right and that is not healthy number 11 is that a lot of people can be very irritated by you and your presence. Why is that? When you're a nice person, you're like, why? I'm not doing anything. The mosquitoes want to attack you. That's the narcissist, right? They want to attack you and they, they are disgusted by you oftentimes because they know you can see through them. They know you can. They know it. They can feel it and it irritates them when you actually gaslight yourself. It irritates them because they want you to wise up. They want you to, believe it or not. That's the only way they'll respect you. So with a narcissist, a lot of times, if you want to respect from a narcissist, the only way is to go no contact and remove yourself, which is hard because a lot of times you love these fun, likable narcissists, right? But here's the difference. This is how I like to explain it. A narcissist is like a line reading actor. Remember, I'm an acting teacher, okay? So what is a line reading actor? A line reading actor is somebody who just memorizes, this is how I'm gonna say it, no matter what. I'm not gonna work off the other person. I have just memorized it this way and that's how I'm gonna say it. Whereas somebody who's working from impulse to impulse, the type of acting I teach, 
is much more connected, much more in the moment. That's an empathic person, somebody in the moment that's not just reading off the script or reciting, they're actually living truthfully under the imaginary circumstances. See, a narcissist doesn't like that. They want you to be a line reading actor. If you haven't noticed, uh, narcissists are like line reading actors. That's why some of them, people think that narcissists are really good actors, but they're not because they lack connection. They lack empathy. They can fake it. And there are some really good line reading actors out there and you see them on TV. And a lot of times they're just very beautiful. And so we put up with it, but you're like, wait, they're not really listening. And you can tell there's like this weird disconnect because they're not really in the moment. And it's very apparent they're acting. Whereas somebody who's just empathic and really in the moment and reading behavior, it feels like they're not acting at all because they're genuine. So that's why a narcissist hates you because they know you're genuine. They know you can sense their BS and often you gaslight yourself and think, oh, I'm just being mean or I'm not, I'm not being very nice or I'm being judgmental, right? And they'll call you out and say, you're being judgmental. So here's where we switch it. Have discernment have discernment. I was just talking to a police officer recently and because I'm selling my car and I was like, how do people sell their car privately? Right. And people wanted to meet me and I was like, how do people sell their car without them just stealing it? And I talked to a police officer because I said, can we do the test drive from the police station? And they said, sure, you can even meet the person in the police station office. So a little tidbit, if anybody wants to sell their car, that is great advice, right? So I was doing that. Some people are very turned off by that. They say, what's your address? And I could feel that they're a narcissist. I could feel that they're maybe a sociopath or they're up to no good, I have no evidence. I could just feel it. And then I would say that, you know, let's meet at the police station and give them the address. And one guy's like, thumbs up. Cause he's like, ha, ah, touche. I could feel it. Of course he didn't want to meet me. Other people who have no problem with that have no problem meeting me there. And so, these are like little things you can read behavior through a text message so have discernment trust yourself the police officer said yes 99 percent of the time that weird feeling is really truthful but people don't believe it because they don't want to be judgmental and then they get in trouble or their car is stolen or they get you know and i'm never gonna like victim bash Things do happen and there are just bad people and you can't avoid it. But if you have a bad feeling about something, a sneaking suspicion that something's off, most likely it's off. So this is how you can become a super empath by drawing boundaries because a regular empath doesn't. They can be a doormat, right? You can be. But as a super empath, you draw boundaries, you trust your instincts, you notice everything that's going on and you don't gaslight yourself if you have a funny feeling. You go with that. You're like, you know what? Something's off here and you just trust it. And if it's not off, that person is going to show you that it's not, not off because sometimes you can have PTSD from the narky narc or something, right? And so you have PTSD and sometimes people who are legitimately good might feel off, but most of the time, no. I've actually never had that in my experience. Every time I felt like somebody's off, they're off. It's weird, something's amiss, right? There was a guy in high school that a bunch of us knew and people would hang out with him. He would play really weird games like dropping a knife on my friend that's weird. But anytime somebody was like, that's weird, they're like, oh, you're just too sensitive. You think too much, all this stuff. Well, that guy ended up off in his girlfriend like years later, it was in the newspaper and everything. He's in prison. So we didn't know that, right? And yeah, that might sound like really weird behavior, but it could be something as simple as the guy who wanted to, you know, buy my car, Long Dong Wan. That was also weird. That's <laughs> his name. Okay, anyway. So trust your instincts, have discernment, set boundaries, and have empathy for yourself. That's how you become a super empath. Okay, so that you don't get manipulated by these people over and over and over. Trust your instincts, read behavior, and don't gaslight yourself, really and truly. And then you're a dun, 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 super empath. Okay, you got this. If this resonates with you at all, please do subscribe and comment and do all the things because it does help spread awareness. And the more of us talking about this, the better. High five. I got you. Thank you so much for being here.